The filmmaker, the director who has directed three feature films, Station, Lavinci, the creator and the host of The Improv, which is the best improvisational comedy group in Bangalore and the founder of the media and production company, Center Stage. We have with us Mr. Saad Khan. Thank you. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Thank Thanks. You. Welcome to our show, Saad Khan. Uh, I feel more than welcome. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So, guys, welcome to another episode of Youth Icon. And uh, today's guest is Mr. Saad Khan. So, let's get to know him better. So, Saad, uh, how did your filmmaking journey start? You were an engineer before that, right? A mechanical engineer. I am still an engineer. I'm a mechanical engineer, but uh, I uh, I always thought that I'm a science student with a flair. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I my journey started very early. I used to direct plays uh, when I was 16, and I, my first play was when I was 16. And everyone told me that, oh, why do you want to direct plays? It's really hard. Audiences don't watch. But I made a lot of commercial plays. I made plays okay. that are more. Uh, you know, uh, in in tune with what the audience wants to see, uh, and uh, right after the play journey, I realized that I also it was a stepping stone for me to work on films, mm -hmm. and uh, I was lucky enough to uh, I was applied to a bunch of universities abroad, and I was lucky enough to get selected to uh, New York University in the film right. course. So I didn't do like a certificate program. I did a master's degree. I did a two-year master's degree, and because I already had an engineering, um, you know, sixteen years yeah. education, I was yeah. able to do that. And when I went, and uh, I, it was a very new world for me because I had just grown up watching like Bollywood films, and I hadn't really even watched uh, the movie like The Godfather up oh. until I reached film school. Right, so right. that's when uh -huh. uh, a plethora of different foreign language films and different different projects from across the world were open to me, you know. And uh, that's how I uh, I kept watching a lot of films, and because I hadn't watched that many films uh, mm. growing, I mean, I watched only Bollywood growing up, yeah, and a lot of Bollywood. D D L J, D D L J, Pakiza, like you know, Mughal Azam, you name it. Right. Uh, but when I started watching international films, I got hooked onto it. So my film school was obviously studying, but also watching a lot of films. Uh, and I watched. Uh, I made sure that I watched two films every day for like two years con consecutively. Oh my god. Uh, um, a lot of my friends even like tease me that I can be like the sort of a personal physical IMDb uh, because <laughs> I know I've watched so many films. Uh, that's pretty much, I and mean, that's where the journey started. And uh, I've been in the filmmaking business now for almost about six, seven years. Mm -hmm. uh, after Station released in 2014, uh, it's been a great journey. But at the same time, it's it's, it's really tough. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, we love it. So, what made you create uh, a full feature film in Hindi in Bangalore? Uh, I worked with uh, after coming back from film school. I worked with Mr. Ashutosh Gowarikar. Obviously, uh, yeah, the Oscar nominated Kele filmmaker. Hum Jansai, I work right? with him on yeah. uh, Kele Hamji Jansai as an associate director, and uh, I learned a lot from him. Uh, even though the film didn't do well uh, uh, on the at the box office, I learned a lot from uh, him. Respect him a lot, and I came back after after being in Bombay. Uh, I I didn't I don't think Bombay uh, was suitable to my taste, you know, as a city. I love Bangalore to bits, so I came back to Bangalore, and uh, that's when Center Stage happened. And aside from center stage, I was also writing, and I wanted to mm. make a feature film. I'd done, I'd made two, three short films, and I had one short film that was screened at Khan, Khan uh, yeah. in 2008. So I was uh, hoping that I'll make a feature film. Uh, and I had read a story about uh, you know three people in a room. What if you put three people in a room, and um, and if they don't like each other, what's going to happen? Yeah, yeah. So I had that as a short story in mind, and uh, developed it into station about three assassins on a deserted railway station at 2 a.m. in the night. And Murphy's Law, everything that has to go wrong, goes wrong. Uh, when that idea came to me, I was looking for producers and I was lucky enough to find uh, a gentleman by the name Sumit Ghosh, mm. uh, who, right. was, who had never produced a film before. Oh. Uh, but uh, okay. we just happened to meet and click and uh, he was very kind enough and he you know, appreciated the passion and uh, he invested in the film. And he was so uh, involved over the two years that we made the film. Yeah. Because we shot the film across two years because of the lack of budget. It was an independent film. Mm. And finally, he uh, you know, he also went out of the way to meet PVR, Directors Red in Bombay, understood the business and was instrumental. And in fact, the most important uh, sort of, uh, you know, uh, uh, person driving the wheel forward in releasing the film station. Uh, so station for me as an experience was learning and we were lucky enough to release the film across six cities and every person in the film was a Bangalorean. So it was a very yeah. proud moment for all of us. <laughs> Right. I, I I have fond memories of the fact that how just about 30, 40 people from Bangalore got together 
and made a feature film in Hindi in Bangalore. Yeah. Dubbing took a lot of time because uh, we had that Kannada South Indian twang, yeah. Yeah. and we had to make it proper Hindi. So that was there. It was fun. A lot of fun. Fun learning, and I think if station wouldn't have happened, I wouldn't be sitting here. So that was, uh, you know, you, you you say right, your first is really special. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's it's a common uh, thing to say. So for me. Station is going to be the most special thing that's happened to me in my life. You also mentioned that one of your uh, short films was screened in Cannes. So uh, tell us a little about that movie. Uh, I was in my uh, um, final year of film school and um, yeah. I had my final semester. So uh, I applied my um, apply, applied the film. I shot yeah. the film on campus. Uh, I was really really lucky to have a lot of support on campus and. Uh, I went uh, I, when I when I reached the f- festival. I was quite young, very young in fact, and I met filmmakers that were younger than me, 19-year-old filmmakers, 20-year-old filmmakers from Afghanistan, from Poland, who were making amazing films, and I was just, you know, swept away with. Uh, I thought that oh, I'm cool. I'm this Indian guy who's got this film. I'm so cool. But I went <laughs> there. I found uh, people a lot more cooler, a yeah. uh, lot more uh, educated in film. A lot more knowledgeable, and I just felt like uh, you know you have these small little raw pebbles on in the, in the sea. Yeah. I just felt like that, <laughs> very inconsequential. But at the same time, I also uh, gained a lot of knowledge by just interacting with them. You know, okay. so the experience was just fulfilling for me because I learned a lot just by communicating with fellow filmmakers from different countries, with different cultures uh, that they, you know different cultures that they came from. And I had my own stories to tell, my own story to tell, and they had their own stories to tell. So we sort of merged, and it was fascinating. It was a fascinating experience. I learned a lot, and I think I always tell younger uh, filmmakers, or upco- I mean, I'm, I'm young too, but uh, filmmakers that are upcoming <laughs> that uh, I think we 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 strive to make, we strive to tell stories, but at the same time we also uh, feel that we know everything. We don't, mm-hmm. you know. So for me, Cannes Film Festival was, was yeah, lo- always a lot to learn. And for me, Cannes Film Festival was a platform. Where I knew that my journey of learning film, making film, mm-hmm. is going to be persistent. Yeah. You know, it's going to be a never-ending process, and I'm happy, and I'm sort of, I've accepted it wholeheartedly now. Uh-huh. <laughs> All right. So after Station, you also uh, you also directed a Hollywood feature film called Love and Sheep. Yeah. Right. Uh, it's about uh, post miscarriage trauma. Trauma that couples that, go that a couple yeah. that couples go through. Yeah. So uh, how was your experience? Shooting a Hollywood movie. Uh, it's a Hollywood film, but it's still independent. So the uh, the process was obviously different. I mean, uh, talk they talk about organization skills, and here you have four people doing one job. Yeah. There you have one person doing, you know, uh, that one job, uh, and the communication is a lot more. Uh, it has to be succinct. It has to be very clear. Yeah. I cannot give a direction to actor saying, I want it more dram- dramatic. Uh, he or she will turn around and ask me, "What do you mean more dramatic? Can you be more clear? Mm. Are you mean? Are you? Do you mean he has to be nervous? Do you mean he has to be nervous dramatic? Do you mean he has to be funny dramatic? What dramatic are you looking for?" Yeah. yeah. Uh, so directing actors is a little different. Uh, talking to technicians there is a different. A, a little different. You talk to a DOP differently there. You talk to a DOP differently here. For me, uh, I know I sound like a broken record, but it was just a learning process. At the same time, I was uh, I was very lucky to work with amazing people. The producer of the film, Dr. Jatin Patel, uh, he um, uh, is a doctor in Atlanta. He was kind enough to fund the project. Uh, then my actors, uh, you know, Kelly Murtag and Robert John Gilchrist, right. uh, they've act- they've been acting in uh, television series and yeah. you know a bunch of other things. They give a lot of time and dedication because I shot the film over two schedules in uh, in the U.S. Yeah. One was uh, uh, you know uh, uh, one year ago and one was about eight months ago. So I went twice to shoot and uh, we shot for about 20, 21 days. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the film is complete now, but we are working on the release pr- process right now. Okay. Uh, I might have to go back again to shoot some more scenes. Okay. Uh, but the over all process uh, again uh, uh, university was involved uh, like even when i was short station a lot of people from colleges uh, were a part of the uh, station my associate producer was 19 years old from uh, from christ college in station okay. and my um, executive producer was a graduate school student in the us okay uh, studying uh-huh. fine arts uh, so uh, i was i've just been lucky to be involved with younger people uh, uh, who will uh, again do a movie based for experience Uh, rather than jump into it thinking that I'm going to make a lot of money, yeah. Because uh, at the end of the day, uh, movie making, film making is a passion process, right? Right. Uh, right. And uh, I've just been lucky. Talking about the younger generation, uh, you're working with a lot of young people in your current movie as well, humble politician, Nagraj. Absolutely. Yeah. So, how is the experience working with the millennials? 
these days. <laughs> I have uh, mixed opinions there. I feel uh, when I say millennials, I I'm not going to be uh, derisive, but at the same time, I know for a fact that it's really hard. Uh, because uh, you know our our, our parents, uh, th- there was a generation gap. When you say generation gap, for us, or at least for me rather, it's 20 years, right? Yeah. But the generation gaps have just now gotten shorter. So even if there is someone who's five years younger than you, they think and behave differently. Uh, so when you have Absolutely. a younger person who's 21 who wants to be an associate director or wants to be in production, for them uh, it it might just be about glitz and glamour, but it's yeah. not, you know. Yeah. It's about a lot of hard work, perseverance, diligence. Mm. Uh, there's a lot that goes into making a film. Yeah. Uh, a lot of passion, a lot of working hours, no Sundays, mm. you know, no breaks. So I, I think uh, I, I millennials. I do have millennials who work with me who are uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't call them millennials because they might be in their mid twenties. But they are beautiful younger people who work really hard, and there are also a lot of younger people who come there saying that, oh, you know what? I want to get this in a hurry. <laughs> I want to do this, and I after this I want to make my feature film. It's good. Uh, that's good passion. But at the same time, you also need to invest some time in understanding, exactly. gaining Take knowledge. Take baby steps. Yeah, right? moving Everything away from the so internet different. and actually reading books or watching movies on a regular basis yeah. to know, you know, what you can do or how you can learn from us. If you want to be a cinematographer, watch. Something watch watch uh, a, a movie by Conrad Hall, you know watch his cinematography or yeah, yeah. look at direction techniques that are followed by different directors. Learning, I think the key is learning. I'm big on learning for some reason, and you know I'm I'm always going to be big on learning <laughs> because I feel even humble politician Nagraj, Danish and me we wrote the film. We are now Danish is acting, and we are we constantly innovate on set. We constantly talking to each other, saying okay, how can this scene be better? Uh, because we we've got a script, we've got a screenplay, but what else can we do? You yeah. know. So, uh, I mean, millennials—they they are obviously, you know, pumping with energy. But at the same time, they have to approach. Maybe their approach can be a lot more about learning. Yeah, they need to be a little more patient as well. Yeah, patience is the key. Absolutely. How did humble politician Nagraj start? It started with this man, Danish Said, the whole of Bangalore knows now, and my association with uh, Danny, uh, as we all fondly call him. Has been for about five years now. I first met him when he came to be a part of the improv. Improv, yeah. Uh, and that time the improv was about a year, year and a half old. And he just uh, came and uh, he, we used to do tryouts where I would sit on the other side and have actors jam with each other. And I, uh, I had he performed. Uh, you know, he he did a situation as Nagraj the first time with a co-actor, and I was blown by his confidence, by his. By his skill set of being able to get the sound right, right off a particular character, yeah. by he the was doing a character on radio also. For radio, also, quite, yes. Quite but I, time. I had not yeah. seen it. I had seen him live. Okay. I saw it live, and I think Nagraj came from that improvisational session uh-huh. onto the radio because he was doing um, the okay. Karan Johar uh, yes, thing, right? He was doing coffee with, with Kiran. Kiran. Yeah. He was doing that. <laughs> uh, so when he came to the uh, the thing, he was doing coffee with Kiran, and I saw him, and I told my um, that time I had another actor with me. I looked at her and I said that this. This man is unbelievably talented, and we need to have him in the improv. Mm. And we immediately got, uh, you know, Dan. Danny was immediately a part of the improv, and I think he's been in the improv for about three and a half years now. Uh-huh. And that's where my journey with Danny, aka Nagraj, started. From Saad Khan, you became generally Saad Khan. Generally Saad Khan. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's, my parents uh, keep asking me, like, why is why are people calling you Khan? Like, I'm like, <laughs> it's because Nagraj calls me Khan. And then our video, we started working on the Facebook Live videos and yeah. the YouTube videos with the Karnataka Rajat Sabha video yeah. that we did two years ago. And uh, uh, I think six, eight months ago, or about a year ago, we wanted to make a movie, obviously, because mm. I'm obviously directing and uh, he's been acting and he's been doing a b- bunch of things uh, on the on social media. Yeah. So we uh, knew that the best best possible outcome was to get together and write a script. So we took off with our executive producer Mars, who's also the producer of uh, the Improv. Yeah. And luckily for me, happens to be my brother as well. So we, the three of us, we took off um, to another, to a small little, uh, you know, just a getaway trip to write the script, and we wrote the script in a week. Oh wow! And there had been some eleven uh, drafts of the script. That's now, yeah, yeah. So we wrote the script. Uh, we wrote, we wrote the idea. We wrote the story. Put our phones aside for a week. Uh. I just wrote the story, and we spent about five to seven days. Uh, I, we came back to Bangalore and then I started writing the screenplay. So, but it's still we're still working on the drafts. I mean, which is which is the part of a, uh, yeah. a writer process and a filmmaking process. Yeah. So, uh, how has your relationship been with all these people? Hemant, Pushkar, Rakshit. Is it a trick question? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you want to be a trick I, I, question? It's, it's been 
I don't know how to explain it. I mean, Pushkar is an amazing, amazing. I think we're going to make a movie called Humble Pushkar. He is so humble and down to earth, and he's made Godi Banna, yeah. and then he's invested in Kirik Party. He's made two films that are now suc- very successful yeah. in, in KFI. Uh, my relationship with Pushkar is uh, very, very frank, friendly. Uh, you know, we uh, I love the way he uh, he communicates his thought. You know, he's a he's a beautiful businessman, very smart businessman. My relationship with Hemant is on a very respectful level because I respect him as a director. and he also came in and gave a lot of script a uh, very positive beautiful script inputs for humble politician nagraj being a co-producer at the same time also being a director adds a lot of value to us creatively right right uh, rakshit was the third person who got on board as a producer and rakshit everyone knows rakshit rakshit is a is a perfectionist so even his inputs are very valuable Absolutely. but at the same time rakshit and hemant and pushka the best thing about them is that they've let us they've given it to us saying that you know what we believe in your script they've maybe come once or twice on set <laughs> they just because they completely believe in what yeah. uh, danny and i are doing you know which is such an amazing thing right for yeah. a, for producers who exactly. are so creative by themselves they've never even at any point uh, they've just given the idea and they beautifully say saad uh, you take the decision when it comes to direction danny and you take a decision when it comes to writing which is amazing like who would say that <laughs> so our relationship with them is that we were just afraid that we might end up getting married to everybody <laughs> So it'll just be like this very polygamous relationship between all of us. I, well, I hope that doesn't happen. But uh, yeah, when you said getting married to everybody, I was, I just had one thought in my mind. Like Danish and Saad are like meant to be with each other. Uh, I can't imagine. It's a very platonic relationship. <laughs> They're both single and not gay. <laughs> very, very. You know, we love we love women. The other, the other sex. So yeah, we are. Uh, whatever you guys have seen, it's just an act. Yeah. No, but we love each other as friends. We love each other as creative people. You give uh, major friendship goals, seriously. Yeah. To be honest, B- like, I was BFF. telling uh, Danish also. You know, uh, I wish I had someone to do the pillow talk with. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that pillow talk, guys. That was again. <laughs> it was it was a Facebook live video. Nothing yeah. happened after <laughs> we ended the video. Nothing happened. I promise you. <laughs> I went to my room. He went to his room. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, I I know you get this question a lot. Uh, how do you manage to be so serious when Danish as Nagraj is being so funny? I mean, I remember uh, Mia Khalifa's video <laughs> where you just had a straight face when he was going on and on and on, and I could we couldn't stop laughing at that video. <laughs> <laughs> this is a concept of being a straight man in a double act. Uh, uh, so I'm the I'm the straight man in the double act with Danish and. Uh, I do laugh. I laugh after it's done <laughs> because I have to control myself because I know that people are also laughing at the fact that he's doing his yeah. Nagraj bits with a, yeah. which are manipulative, outrageous, and I have to be the other guy and I have to hold my end exactly uh, so that the comedy can be more. It's only for that. But at the same time, yes, there are times where I I have had tears in my eyes because it's been so funny and I've had to control it till the end of the video. And the moment it's end, it ends. I'm just like, oh my god, that was so funny. <laughs> so I, I I do laugh. I do laugh. Okay. So, so what's the secret? The secret would be, uh, I think, a camaraderie with a co-actor. Uh, we, at the end of the day, we are performers as well. So he's a performer as Nagraj. I'm a performer as Saad Khan, the generalist, and not Saad Khan, the director. Uh, I, I, I would say we're lucky to just be able to spark off uh, an interaction with each other. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I think from the the first video itself, we never knew it's going to become. what it is now yeah. right you know we never knew that young people uh, kids from co- schools are going to be imitating us <laughs> uh, we just did it because we wanted to pass the social message yeah uh, by showing what is happening in our city mm-hmm. with the background of politics right that's that's the only reason we started it up so sad uh, when you came back to bangalore after your movie with ashtosh uh, you founded center stage yes uh, and it didn't happen as easily as the way you just mentioned it <laughs> uh i i had a um, another friend of mine uh, called siddhant in bangalore siddhant yeah and uh, he was uh, uh, he wasn't moving from bangalore i had already you know made up my mind that i'll work in bombay mm. uh but when i wasn't too happy with the fact that i wasn't suitable for bombay i just came back and uh, i met a bunch of like minded people in bangalore mm-hmm. siddhant was one of them and i you know i was like okay let's do something and we 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 knew we knew that there's a lot of potential in bangalore and i had already got gotten acting experience filmmaking experience yeah. so i thought why not use why not start an acting workshop which folk which comes from a director's point of view yeah 
so that it's more beneficial to actors. Right. And we started our first uh, workshop batch, I think, in 2011. Mm. Uh, and the first batch, we 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 just did some very basic promotions, and we got about 11 to 12 students. Okay. And the batch went really well. And we used to do like weekend workshops, so four right. weekends right. that time. And the second batch, when we announced. The word of mouth became so strong that in the second batch we get 25 students. Mm -hmm. And the third batch we got 35 students. And I was just like, wow, so this is going somewhere. Uh, so that came, that, that started off with a very basic acting training workshop module. Yeah. yeah. Which then uh, moved on to uh, our, me being lucky in finding Sumit to mm -hmm. produce Station. Then was able to give a lot of people who came to the workshop an opportunity to act in the film. Yeah. So for example, Samir Kevin Roy, mm -hmm. uh, Rohit Nair. Hardik Shah, all the actors of Station yeah, were yeah. all from the workshop. We're all from, yeah. So it was exactly. a, it was a win-win for everybody. You know, it was like you are fueling, uh, you are creating a channel, and then using that channel or platform to do more things, right? Yeah. Uh, and I think in the in, in like a year, year and a half, everyone came to know about the acting workshop. We got a lot of inquiries. I started directing ad films as well after Station. Uh, so now, since I've sent the stage, I, I'm 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 handling all the creative aspects. And Mars uh, is handling the business aspects. Okay. So we are partners in the company. And uh, Center Stage uh, is about giving new opportunities to talent in the city. So we have a casting portfolio. Mm -hmm. We also have a media production company okay. which does ad films. Uh, we take mm -hmm. up the production. So uh, And we also have the portfolio of uh, creative arts like the improv. Okay. And yeah. events, comedy events as well. Right. Um, uh, we have, well, right now because of Humble Perdition, Nagraj, Center Stage as a company is only focusing on executing the project okay. from the production standpoint. So we're only busy with that. Once the film is done, we'll again get back to all the other things that we're doing. So you mentioned improv, the improv. The improv. <laughs> so tell us about it. How did how did it get conceptualized? Uh, it was uh, we were sitting in a coffee shop, and uh, again it was Siddhant, me, and a bunch of other actors, and we were just thinking. Um, I have been I have been an avid uh, lover of whose line is it anyway. Uh, and when I was in the, in the US, I used to go and perform uh, in all these back alley theater groups. Okay. And I would do improvisation. And a couple of times I went up on stage and did some stuff. And a bunch of other people would be like, hey, you, you're pretty good, you know, why don't you try this? <laughs> I didn't try it because I was focusing on film. Yeah. So I kept it in, aside somewhere. Mm -hmm. But when I came, when I was in Bangalore and we were, uh, Center Stage was about six, eight months old. At that time, you know, we just said, you know, how about... Uh, I was like, can people do improvisation? Can people be funny on the spot? Mm -hmm. So Siddhant, I knew was funny. I, I, I was there. I don't know whether I was funny or not, but I knew I could be spontaneous. Then there was Kenneth Sebastian and a bunch of other people who joined the bandwagon. Yeah. And we announced the first show, you know, without thinking. And even the name of the show, show came out uh, very simple. It's like, what's the short form of improvisation? Improv. We were just sitting. I said, okay, how about the improv? And I was like, okay, yeah, the improv sounds cool. And that's it. And now then we announced the show. Now it has become a word in itself. The improv. I mean, right? touch wood like, now. We've just been lucky. Like, improv. Okay, yeah, and it was cool. And we went, we did the first show, we were so surprised. We got 150 people to come watch. Mm -hmm. And then it just kept going and going, and you know, and now it's like four and a half, five years now. We've got Sumuki Suresh, we've got Danish Seth, a part of improv. We've got Daraya Sunawala, Sal Yusuf, Timothy Schulz, people who have been a part of the improv. Kenneth performed Kenny. in improv. Uh, Kanan Gil performed in the improv. That's uh, where they all started. Sandeep their Rao performed well. in the improv. So yeah, we've we've just been lucky. And for us, I I love the idea of spont spontaneous interaction. You know, so when I host the show, uh, the way I am as a filmmaker, I'm very different as a host. Yeah, I've seen that. Right? <laughs> yeah, and I'm, I'm I'm a lot more sarcastic, and you know, I have this yeah. personality that I need to play with, work with rather. And uh, but the energy that we get from people because it's so much fun to make people laugh, and when they watch a one and a half hours or a two hour show and they leave. And they say they come out and say, "How did you guys make that up on the spot? <laughs> like a situation you just made it happen." And we don't have an answer because we don't know. Mm -hmm. But in the back end, we do a lot of rehearsals. Yeah. We talk yeah. to each other. We do a lot of, you know, practice. And that we, quick you know, wit should yeah, be the quick, the quick wit. Sumuki is a powerhouse talent. Danish is unbelievable in the improv. Darais, uh, I cannot, uh, I cannot begin to uh, explain to you how. Um, you know, uh, when I look at him perform, I'm in awe of his uh, his mind, like the things that he can come up with on the spot. Exactly. And sometimes when I'm interacting with audience and I say something, I'm just like, did I just say that? Did that just really happen? Uh, so yeah, it's, uh, it's we all love the improv a lot. And they I think because do. of that love, 
the audience also loves coming to watch us. Absolutely. I I'm a huge fan of the Thank you so much. Do we have to do the rapid fire? Yeah. I'm very nervous. I mean. <laughs> Don't be nothing like controversial. I, I can feel like the entire blood <laughs> going instead of going from here to here or here to here it's going like this sideways. <laughs> yeah. nothing, nothing to be scared of. I'm not scary at all. No, you're not scary, but your questions might be scary. No, no, no. My okay. questions are also very sweet. No, please. Let's <laughs> let me let me hear your rapid fire. All questions. right. Hollywood or Indian cinema? Um both for sure both. I mean, I can't you can't compartmentalize that. Yeah. I feel. Uh, I've grown okay I, I'm a hardcore indian so indian cinema indian Deepika or Priyanka who would you go on a date with like Deepika Padukone and Priyanka Chopra yes <laughs> i thought like some random random <laughs> uh date with um i i very sort of platonic date it would be uh Priyanka Chopra because i think we'll have a lot to talk about okay which is in common all right If a movie or a biopic were to be made on your life, what would it be called and who would play it? You would uh, be directing it for sure, I guess. <laughs> why? No, I wouldn't direct my own biopic. It's it's scary, right? It's almost like when you are when you have to put drips, you're putting drips for yourself when you're lying on the bed. But my biopic will be called Not Sad But Sad. Because a lot of people say Sad Khan for some reason. I was shooting, we were shooting for Amar Parish, and I said, Sad, Sad, one picture. I'm like. Sad, you want like you want a sad picture? Like, no, no, sad, sad Khan, right? I'm like, yeah, sad Khan. Like, I'll give you a picture, but say sad. So not sad, but sad would be a good name. Okay, and who would play? Who would play uh, me in the biopic? A lot of people say that my voice is like Farhan Akhtar. Uh huh. Or it sounds like Farhan Akhtar, so I will, I will beg Farhan Akhtar to do it. Oh, okay. Because I think he is. Uh, He's an amazing actor. Personality. Yeah. What would happen if you woke up as a woman one day? I would admire myself. Uh, However, that's <laughs> what happened. I, 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 I think women have made a great impact in my life. Uh, I always believe that it's much harder for women than men. Um, I have a niece, uh, and my sister is has lost at least about half her weight just trying to take care of the baby, oh, right? Oh. So I, mothers go through a lot. Uh, yeah. I, res- I respect women to a different level. I think a lot of me is also. I'm, I'm, I'm. I'm A lot of times, I feel I'm a feminist as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, so if I woke up as a woman, I think I will, I will really, really like I will do everything that a woman would like to do. Okay. Like go shopping that day, wear makeup, uh, <laughs> you know, tr- make sure that I've looked at a guy and the guy doesn't know that I've looked at him. <laughs> like do everything like that. We are good at that. <laughs> All right. Uh, one thing you want to change from the past. My past. From your past. Uh, I I wish I um uh, had been a reader a lot more of books. Mm-hmm. I only started reading uh, uh after I finished engineering. Okay. I wish I was re- reading way back. Mm-hmm. Uh but I was into sports as well growing up. I was into a lot of other things like extracurricular activities. So I never really got the time to read a lot. Okay. I only started reading. I wish I had been a a voracious reader or a persistent reader way way earlier. Crazy fan moment while shooting Humble Politician. I know you have a lot. I can, I can Crazy feel. Crazy fan that. moment. Uh, it's it's very cute. I, I mean, uh, I was I was walking by uh, on the location. Uh, we were shooting the rally scene, and there were a lot of people there. Yeah. And I I was in my element, and I just walked past with my. I was walking past my team to go and set up a shot. And there were a bunch of, uh, uh, I think there were 15, 16, or 17 year old girls that were standing, and uh, they were, I think they they were come to take pictures with Danish me and all of that, and they were standing in the side, and I walked past them, and I just happened to just look at them like that, and they just kept, oh, Saad looked at me, Saad looked at me, <laughs> and my brother looks at me and says like, they're saying that for you, like have you looked at yourself in the mirror? They 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 they're losing it because you looked at them, <laughs> and I was like, let let me have that moment. He said, no, I'm not gonna let you have that moment. What what are brothers for? What are brothers for? No, but it felt it felt very um, there was a very starry feel to it. Uh huh. Obviously, I went up to them later and I took pictures with them and I met them and they they were so sweet and so loving and so encouraging. So that was a very interesting fan moment. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> And that's the most that's the that's the most fresh in my memory right now. Oh, one thing women should know about men but don't. What a nice question. Um that we um uh, we mean everything that we say. <laughs> uh other than that, uh we are actually very conny. Mm. 
we just hide it behind like either a body or behind like some style or rep representation with our friends but we i think a lot of us we like connie men like connie yeah rising stars of indian cinema nawazuddin siddiqui for sure uh, he's already like you know uh, definitely uh, adil hussain uh, i saw a movie called mukti bhavan really good um in terms of um, when i say when you say rising I, in terms of directors uh i think uh, i i'm a big fan of uh, sujit sarkar okay. who made piku yeah. and yeah. ricky dona kannada i mean of course rakshit shetty uh, but i don't think he's rising anymore he's already on the top oh. um definitely watch watch out for hemant rao for his next film danish 100% he's acted really really well in humble bodies nagraj hmm. um and in kfi i would definitely say uh i have seen um rushes of uh, pushkar's film jeer jimbe mm -hmm. so that kartik is a good director to watch out for shruti shruti is quite talented again she's acting in humble but she's quite talented because I w she's shot Absolutely. four days with us she's very talented i would definitely say radhika chetan mm. who was act yeah. who acted in rangita ranga and rangita ranga she yeah. is got a very interesting face and she's she emotes really well and she's I, also a dancer she's also a dancer yeah. she also has come to my acting workshops and uh, taught oh. yoga to my actors as well okay. Okay. uh and body movement and stuff so mm. she's pretty she's pretty well versed with that art form mm. all right one thing you want to change about the indian film industry okay that's that, I, i i know it's a rapid fire but i'm going to say that i think i'm no one to say that i can change anything or want to change anything in the industry um very diplomatic not diplomatic it's the truth i mean i i'm still learning yeah. um and i don't think that i have yet done anything that i can say that oh this has to change or that has to change a change is inevitable sometimes yeah. change is also something that can happen in due course of time yeah. uh definitely for sure what i would uh, say is with movies in in kfi like kirik party godi banna u turn uh there are, the, the audiences are evolving right and i think the audience will then uh, be a, a a reason for a change and they already showing that reason yeah uh I feel like there is a audience for every film. There is an audience for a commercial pot boiler, there is an audience for an art film, there is an audience for an independent drama, there is an audience for an action film, for a period drama, there is an audience for everything. So, uh, more truth than diplomacy. Okay. So, enact a Nagraj and Manjunath scene from Humble Politician Nagraj. Is that a part of the rapid fire? Yes. I need that hamper I'm telling you. <laughs> But yeah, I'm, I'm going to be sporting, and I'm going to do it. So the yeah. in the teaser, if you've seen, Samanjunath goes up to Nagra and says, "Sir, sir, it was an honor to work on you, sir." Manjunath, please, it is not an honor to work on me. It is an honor to work in me. <laughs> so, so uh, that is like that is the funniest part of the teaser. Yeah. And God, you, there, there are many moments like that. I think. We've got a wonderful people to work with in Amal Pradesh Nagraj. <laughs> Danish has set a very good example for the entire crew. Uh, he is uh, as the lead. He is. Uh, there is a lot of fun on set. Absolutely, you know, fun on I set. can totally imagine. Yeah, Vijay Chandur as Manjunath. He is uh, a great, great person to work with. Mm -hmm. We've got some wonderful people. Shrinivas Prabhu from uh, who was in Mr. and Mrs. Ramachari. He's there in the film. So it's been it's been quite a quite a great journey. So moving on. Yes. What are your hobbies and interests? I know that you have very little free time for yourself in your busy schedule but whenever you get a little time for your me time what do you do Uh one of my I I don't know whether it counts as a hobby but I love spending time with my niece She's 2 years old and uh, she I uh, have pictures all across the net because so of me cute, yeah. yeah I think you've seen it as well so my, one of my hobbies is to spend time with her yeah. uh, Another hobby definitely is uh, I I like collecting uh, DVDs of movies. Mm -hmm. So I DVDs. do DVDs. Yeah, DVDs. So I collect DVDs whenever I get a chance. Um and um I, I reading. I make sure that I visit the library once in two weeks or once in a week. Mm. And I just sit in the library and I just browse. So you're not the Kindle reader. You're actually No, the paperback. Yeah, 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 the the hard bound book, you know. So I go to the library. I just sit around the library. I go and I keep browsing. So I keep reading the the back uh, pages of the books mm. and then i just keep moving on so i spend sometimes i spend like 2 3 hours in the library and this time is just pass um Absolutely. that's a good hobby and i think yeah just playing cricket sometimes <laughs> leisure and uh, 
uh, I, I also um, love, uh, you know, just spending time on um, social media just to see what's happening. <laughs> and that's just time pass. So it's a, it's, a, it's a fun hobby. So what's your word to the upcoming filmmakers? There are a lot of people, you know, switching from the mainstream courses to filmmaking and a lot of kids are passionate about it these days. So being, exper being an experienced one, what would your message be to them? My message to all, everyone who is uh, wanting to be a filmmaker or exploring media, uh, improvisation, comedy, art, events, uh, is just that if you believe that you have the talent to pursue an art form, uh, belief is the first thing, obviously. The second thing is you need to work hard towards it. And the third thing is to keep persistently trying till you succeed. Because it's not going to happen fast. It's not going to happen easily. If it happens easily, great. I'm happy for you, lucky for you. But if it doesn't, don't stress. Don't worry. Keep at it. Uh, right. Because if you love it, then you just have to keep at it. It's literally like your child. You know, it's, it's your child. You're nurturing it. Absolutely. And your child is growing and you're nurturing it. Uh, so keep nurturing your passion. Keep working towards it. Keep, uh, you know, know, know that at some point you are going to find your destination. Uh, and once you do find the destination, you will, you will know at that time that you will want more because that's just human nature. So, uh, you've worked on three different languages, right? Hindi, English, Kannada. So, what's the difference between working in making movies in three languages? It's, it's, a, it's a wonderful question. Uh, movie making cinema is a language in itself. Um, I think any other language, uh, which is whether it's Kannada, English, Hindi, uh, they, they all have a means of communication. Yeah. So for me, cinema itself is a language. So yeah. it doesn't really depend if there is another means of communication added to it. Uh, right? Uh, you might be well versed in understanding Kannada. I might be well versed in understanding Hindi, English. I might be well versed in later communicating in Kannada right. after a couple of months. Yeah. Right? So I, I feel that when you're communicating cinema as a language, right. that yeah. becomes more important than anything else. Absolutely. And in, and in in that cinema, in that in that language that you're communicating, you've got characters that are interacting with each other via emotions, via script, mm -hmm. not via a particular language. language. Because there are some, many times when you uh, when you see a foreign couple sitting and having a breakfast with their kid, and the mother is uh, being very uh, cute with the child, or the father is being very cute with the child, you can't. You, and you're sitting in a distance, maybe uh, about you know, 20 yards away. Yeah. You're not going to look there and be like, oh, what language are they communicating? You understand there's love there. The emotion. You understand there's an emotion there. You understand there's a connect. You understand that the father is uh, looking at the child in a particular way. You don't need to know the language. So I I would say I treat it like that. So, But but all three of them so far have just been very, very rewarding. And uh, it's, it's I have learned a lot more than what I have, I think, done yeah. in all these processes. All right, Saad, so uh, thank you so much for uh, giving us a little time out of your busy schedule. Thank you so much. God bless you. Thank it's you. a privilege for me to thank meet you, so you and talk to you. Thank you so much. God bless you. Thank, thank you for you. being here. Thank you. Tamgelari ke namaskar. Tamgelari ke namaskara. So that's a wrap of this episode of Youth Icon. I'll see you in the next episode. Till then, keep watching YTV. It's your channel. And this is Generalist Saad Khan. Namaskaram.